The difference in the Python coding example is particularly interesting. If you want to skip to a particular example, there are timestamps in the timeline below. In summary, GPT-4 is better if you want creative output and Bing Chat is better if you want a concise factual answer. Here are the five major differences between GPT-4 and Bing Chat, which is also powered by GPT-4. The first one is cost. Currently, the only way to use the full GPT-4 from OpenAI is to use their Chat GPT Plus uh, paid service. So here I have the default GPT-3.5 model and I can select the GPT-4 model. And you can see that here under my account, I'm paying $20 per month for this uh, Chat GPT Plus subscription. That's the only way to get GPT-4 directly from OpenAI. And here on the right, we have the Bing Chat, which is completely free. You just have to make an account with Microsoft. The second difference is the current usage limits. In the paid Chat GPT Plus, uh, the GPT-4 currently has still a cap of 25 messages for every three hours, which is pretty bad because you're paying $20 per month to do this. Bing Chat, on the other hand, has a cap of 150 messages per day but it's free. The third big difference is the data cutoff or how up to date these models are. One big limitation of GPT-4 is that it was trained on data up to September of 2021. So it doesn't have any information about what happened after that date. So let's test this. I'll ask who won the NBA championship in 2022. And then and it's going to generate an answer. So it says, I'm unable to provide real-time information as my knowledge was last updated in September of 2021. So unfortunately, it's not able to provide up-to-date data, but it gives you kind of the last available data. So it gave you the champions for 2021. And also gives you kind of idea where you could find the more up-to-date information. But the Bing Chat works with Bing Search. So when we ask the same question of Bing Chat, it's going to search the web. So it says searching NBA championship winner 2022. And it tells you that uh, the Golden State Warriors won the championship. Even gives you the score of game six, which was the decisive game. And uh, it tells you that the Golden State Warriors beat the Boston Celtics. So this is exactly what you would get if you search this question in Google. And it works quite well. So in this case, and anything that deals with up-to-date information, Bing Chat will definitely have a leg up over GPT-4 since that's like more of a static model. The fourth major difference between these two systems is the available input length. In the GPT-4 model, straight from OpenAI, you can input up to 25,000 words, which is huge. You can essentially put like a whole uh, manual in there. In the Bing Chat, there is a limit of 2,000 characters. So it's a lot more limited than the GPT-4 from OpenAI. And the last difference between these two systems is the response length and quality. In general, GPT-4 will give you a lot more elaborate and longer response compared to the Bing Chat. Bing Chat generally gives you a lot shorter answer that's a lot more concise, not as elaborate and not as creative. Sometimes I prefer the more elaborate answer from GPT-4 and sometimes you just want to answer a question and Bing Chat would be a better tool. But in those cases, maybe Google search would be just as good as Bing Chat. Let me show you the differences on some specific examples. First, I'll ask for some investment advice. I can invest $1,000 each month. I'm 30 years old and I'm planning to retire when I'm 65 years old. What is the best way to invest this money? And let's see what GPT-4 says. It's not super fast at generating the response. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute if it decides to give you a longer answer. Here's the whole response from GPT-4. As you can see, it's quite elaborate. It starts with a disclaimer that it's not a financial advisor and uh, you should consult a real financial advisor for this important topic. But then it gives you an eight point strategy on how to invest your money. So first is diversification, really good idea, uh, not to have uh, all your eggs in the same basket. Uh, low cost index funds, which is generally the accepted strategy for retail investors is the best way to invest your money if you don't have time to pick individual stocks. Total cost averaging, that kind of like helps you ride out the up, ups and downs of the stock market, also really good advice. Focus on the long term, so don't uh, pull your money in and out of the market, also a great idea. Rebalance your portfolio when some assets go too high or too low, also great. Maximize tax advantage accounts. Uh, also a really good idea if you have an employer, get your money in a 401k, Roth IRA is also great. Uh, keep an emergency fund so you don't have to dip in your investments at the wrong time when the stock market is down. And then review your progress regularly to see where you stand. So overall, I think this is a really good answer. If I talk to a professional advisor, I think this is kind of the answer they would give you if uh, you ask them to just give you like a one page summary of what you should do. Now I'm gonna submit the same question to Bing Chat. It searched the web and it gives you the answer. It doesn't give you any disclaimers that it's not a financial advisor. It said to start with a savings account. I disagree with that. I don't think you need a savings account. It's just your money is sitting there stale. Uh, invest in 401k, invest in RA, also good ideas. Uh, get a taxable brokerage account, not bad. Invest in ETFs. So all that is pretty good, but a GPT answer is a lot more um, elaborate and I think goes into some really good uh, ideas. And here in the Bing chat, it doesn't tell anything about low cost index funds, which is probably the most important thing you need to know 
if you want to uh, conservatively invest your money. I saw on the web that the GPT models sometimes have a hard time with the uh, reasoning. I'm going to tell it. I'm staying in Manhattan. So I'm in Manhattan. What is the distance from where I'm standing to Los Angeles? So it has to kind of figure out that where I'm standing is Manhattan and then the, figure out the distance from Manhattan to Los Angeles. I've seen some examples where some other models give you the wrong answer. So let's see what uh, GPT-4 tells you. So it correctly identifies that uh, it wants to figure out the distance between Manhattan, New York, and Los Angeles, California. It depends uh, on the exact location in Manhattan. Manhattan is about 10 miles long, I think. And the distance between these two cities, uh, 2,450 miles. But it also gives you a disclaimer that that's like an air distance on the map. If you're driving, this might be longer than that. So let's ask uh, Bing Chat to see what uh, that has to say. It searched for the distance between Manhattan and Los Angeles, gives you the correct answer, both in kilometers and miles. And uh, also gives you the map of Los Angeles. And then also gives you uh, some ads for TripAdvisor on when to stay some hotels. So I think this is how they want to monetize this feature. Uh, the idea is that people are searching for accommodations and then you are more enticed to just click on one of these hotels and book it straight from here and they can get some commission. So this question was absolutely no problem for neither of the systems. Let's try one more factual question. So here, which one is heavier, the Eiffel Tower or the Great Pyramid in Giza? Explain your reasoning. So it correctly says that Great Pyramid of Giza is heavier than the Eiffel Tower. Overall, GPT-4 gave you a correct answer. Uh, very elaborate reasoning. I think this is exactly what you're looking for if you're asking this type of question. So let's try that with the Bing chat. Here you can see the massive difference between the length of the answers. So in the Bing chat, it gives you a super short paragraph. It tells you that the Great Pyramid Giza is heavier and it's 6 million tons and uh, Eiffel Tower is only 10,000 tons. In the GPT-4 is a lot more elaborate, a lot more creative. It gives you a lot more reasoning, different types of materials used between the structures. Sometimes it's good to have the more concise answer of the Bing chat if you just want the quick answer, like which one is heavier. If you want the more like an essay type response, GPT-4 is uh, clearly superior. Next, I'm going to ask for some coding help. Write code in Python that will calculate the area of a triangle from the length of its three sides. In the code, ask for the three sides as A, B, and C, entered sequentially. So Bing chat was a lot faster spitting out the response. Uh, I hit it after the GPT-4 and it's already done and GPT-4 is still generating um, the code. It seems like both GPT-4 and Bing Chat identified the correct formula. You have to calculate the semi-parameter, so it's A plus B plus C divided by 2. And then the area is calculated with this um, square root uh, formula. So let's go back to GPT-4. It's still generating, so it is quite slow. You have to be a little bit patient. I copied each code into PyCharm to test it. So here I have the GPT-4 output and here I have the Bing chat output. So let's run this with some example. So run GPT-4, side A, let's say two, side B, let's say four, and side C, let's say five. And it gives me the area of the triangle uh, to be 3.799 and some other digits. So it executed the code, no problem. Let's try Bing chat. So let's say run Bing chat and with the same number. So two, four, and side C was five and it gives me the area of uh, 3.80. So what's interesting, I decided to round the output to two decimal places, so 3.80, and you can see that the rounding here is right here. But now let's try each code with an impossible example. So let's go back to GPT-4 and run that one, and we'll say uh, side A is two, side B is four, and side C is seven. And that cannot form the triangle because seven is more than two plus four. So if you hit it, it will give you an answer that the given sides do not form a triangle. So that's this second part of the code. It uh, validates if uh, the number you give it can form a triangle. So it tests each possibility. So A plus B is bigger than C, A plus C is bigger than B, and B plus C is bigger than A. If uh, any of those conditions are not met, then uh, the numbers you give it cannot be a triangle. So it prints you that if it's okay, it will give you the area. And if it's not okay, it will give you the statement, the given sides do not form a triangle. So let's try the same example with the Bing chat code. So we'll run that one. Uh, side A is two, side B is four, and then side C is seven. And when you execute that, it gives you an error. So what happens here is that one of these terms, uh, uh, when you do so side C, so S, is two plus four plus seven, so that is uh, six and a half, and then you do minus C. So six and a half minus seven is minus 0.5, and then you, when you multiply all these uh, numbers, you get a negative number, and then you try to do a square root of that, and that's the error. You can't do a square root of a negative number. So the code from GPT-4 is better because it gives you exactly what's the problem, that those sides can not form a triangle. If you are a novice user and you see, get this um, uh, red error, you don't know what's going on. 
um, you kind of have to have some knowledge of mathematics. So as far as quality of code, I would say the GPT-4 code is better because it has uh, kind of like a fail safe uh, feature. But if you were looking for a concise code, maybe the Bing chat code is better because it does what it's supposed to do. It just doesn't allow for the possibility to give it um, imaginary numbers. If you're finding this video useful, please give it a like so YouTube can show it to more people. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please also consider subscribing to this channel. Now let's see if it can do math proofs. So suppose n is an integer. Prove that if n squared is even, then n is also even. Bing chat was a lot faster in this case, and they both gave a correct answer at the first glance. So they both decided with the same strategy. Uh, they decided to prove the uh, contrapositive. So they said the n to be a 2k plus 1, so to uh, be an odd number. So 2k plus 1 is an odd number. Then you do n squared, which is 2k plus 1 squared. Then you expand this, you get uh, 4k squared plus uh, 4k plus 1. That's uh, also an odd number. And then uh, it summarizes the proof. So both of them essentially gave the same answer. I would say the GPT-4 is a little bit more elaborate. It gives you a little bit more detail but they both work. So here I would give the win to Bing Chat because it was much faster. Now I'll test it on some medical uh, slash pharma knowledge. I'll ask what is Hallison. So let's see from GPT-4 and also from Bing Chat. And so GPT-4 just starts generating right away. Uh, for Bing Chat, it always says searching the web for Hallison and then it starts generating the answers. Again, Bing Chat much, much faster than uh, GPT-4. Both systems gave a very good answer. They both identified that Hallison was used uh, to treat something else is a kinase inhibitor. It was tested for uh, diabetes, but that failed. And then artificial intelligence uh, identified that Hallison is actually a novel antibiotic, which is a really big deal because that's the first novel antibiotic in probably three or four decades. Uh, but here actually Bing Chat, I think, gave a better answer than uh, GPT-4 because it highlights that Hallison's antibiotic um, mechanism is unconventional. It disrupts the flow of protons across the cell membrane. So that's uh, that was kind of like the big finding of the cell paper. It gives you also the reference. So GPT-4 doesn't give you really any references unless you ask for them uh, explicitly. Uh, the Bing chat gives you the references right away, which is really useful. So I think for pharma and things like this, where also up-to-date information is really useful, Bing chat in its current stage uh, is much better than GPT-4 because GPT-4 is a static model. If you are looking for something that you're not particularly familiar with, I'm really familiar with Hallison. I'm uh, planning to make a video about it soon because I think it's a huge deal. But if I was searching for something that I'm not familiar with, I might actually use Bing chat in its current state in conjunction with uh, Google and Google Scholar to uh, find interesting things about um, what I'm looking for. Let's end on a lighter note. I'll ask GPT-4 and Bing Chat to uh, create some jokes. So can you create some really good Chuck Norris jokes? I would like to hear original jokes, not jokes that you found on the internet. So what I'm looking for is not just to search for Chuck Norris jokes on the web. I want the artificial intelligence, the large language model, to create something novel, some new jokes. So the Bing chat is already done. Uh, GPT-4 is still uh, creating. So while GPT-4 is still spitting out the answer, let me read some of these from Bing chat. So Bing chat presented five Chuck Norris jokes, but the problem is that I said in my prompt, I would like to hear original jokes, not jokes that you found on the internet. So then I Googled every single joke that it provided and I found it verbatim on the internet. Chuck Norris doesn't do push-ups; he pushes the earth down. Here's the same one verbatim. It seems like Bing Chat got a lot of jokes from this website. Here, Chuck Norris can divide by zero. Here is here it is verbatim again. Chuck Norris can slam a revolving door. That's the third one. Here's a different website. Chuck Norris can kill two stones in one bird. That's the fourth joke. Exactly word for word. For word. And the fifth joke was uh, Chuck Norris can strangle it with a cordless phone. I also found that one right here. While Bing Chat fulfilled the first part of the request to give me the Chuck Norris jokes, it ignored uh, the second part, the condition that I wanted original jokes, not something that is found on the internet. Maybe it doesn't know the difference between the two, but that's a, a serious problem because if you're using a, a Bing Chat to create um, something new, uh, you can get into trouble for plagiarizing the internet. So be very careful if you are. Uh, create something with the Bing chat, uh, maybe do a quick Google search to make sure that somebody hasn't published something exactly the same. The output of GPT-4 in the jokes department is a lot better. It's extremely impressive, actually. It gave us 10 jokes in total, and about half of them are truly original as far as I can tell. So the first one says, Chuck Norris doesn't need a flashlight. Darkness retreats when he enters the room. I found a similar joke. I did not find the same joke word for word on the internet, but I found um, a similar joke that the first part is the same, but then it says he turns the dark off as opposed to darkness retreats when he, he enters the room. So it's the same joke, um, 
overall but it rewarded it uh, in a creative way so i would give it like a 50 percent credit here the second joke is when chuck norris sends a text message the phone doesn't vibrate it trembles in fear so that's the second tab right here and i did not find anything like that on the internet so that to me is a truly original chuck norris joke the third one is Chuck Norris once played soccer, and that's how we got the asteroid belt. I searched around and I uh, found some long list of Chuck Norris jokes, and it says the asteroid belt was once a planet, but that's before Chuck Norris roundhouse kicked it. It's a similar theme, but I would say that's a new joke. It, it's a combination of the soccer, uh, but it does have the similarity of the asteroid belt. So I would say it used this data set on the right in its trading data, and it kind of remixed it into a new joke. So the fourth one is. Earthquakes are just the Earth's weight of plotting when Chuck Norris finishes a workout. I searched around and even Google told me it looks like there aren't any great matches in your search. So truly original joke. Very impressive. The fifth one is Chuck Norris can hear sign language. That one is not original at all. I found it uh, verbatim on the internet. When Chuck Norris looks at the sun, the sun is the one that goes blind. Also, I found the word for word on Twitter uh, and also some similar variations. The seventh one is the Bermuda Triangle was just Chuck Norris playing with a boomerang. I found some references to boomerang in the, the Chuck Norris files but uh, nothing exactly like that joke. So I would say that one is also original. The eighth one is Chuck Norris doesn't swim. He commands the water to move around him. I found a similar one. Chuck Norris doesn't swim. He beats the water into submission. So same joke, same kind of punchline, uh, slightly different wording. Time doesn't wait for anyone except Chuck Norris. I found a similar one. Time waits for no one unless that man is Chuck Norris. So it's the same joke, just rewritten. Uh, when Chuck Norris plays hide and seek, even the laws of physics can find him. And uh, there's a similar one when Chuck Norris plays hide and seek, even Google can't find him. I think the one on the web is actually funnier. The one with the laws of physics, I don't really get it. I don't think, I think that's a poor rewritten of the same joke. So overall, much better performance than Bing Chat. So for creative purposes, it's better to use uh, GPT-4 as opposed to Bing Chat, unless you need uh, the output to include some uh, up-to-date information that uh, uh, GPT-4 does not have. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video.